afternoon. My name is Sarah Winslow. I have a kindergartner and a third grader here in Wake County Public Schools, and I have read the Common Core standards for both grades. My third grader has visual and hearing impairments, and she's also a slow learner. She is a kind, fun, spunky girl. She has a lot of strengths, but she cannot perform the kind of abstract reasoning the Common Core requires. I don't say this lightly. My husband and I have spent a lot of time and money trying to make our daughter learn like we learn. We're both graduates of Duke University School of Law, he with high honors, I with honors. But at some point, you have to accept your child for who she is and encourage her to develop her own strengths and find her own path. For those of you who have or teach average or gifted children, good for you. But please don't be so short-sighted as to pretend children like my daughter don't exist. There are thousands of slow learners in North Carolina, and we have a moral and a legal obligation to teach them, too. Slow learners spend the school year struggling with a curriculum that was not designed for them, and it does not teach them the type of skills that they can learn and that they need to find jobs as adults. Then, to cap off their year, slow learners, and I want everybody to hear this, and children with mild mental retardation, children with IQs as low as 55, take end of grade tests and end of course assessments. These children spend at least six hours sitting in a room trying to make sense of common core questions they have no hope of answering. <coughs> this is cruel and it's humiliating and it needs to stop. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Frank Levista. I'm retired. Looks like I'm probably the oldest gentleman in here. First of all, I want to say Common Core is unconstitutional. Article 1, Section 8, Clauses 1 through 18, lists what the federal government can be involved in. They can spend the money on it. Now, I spent 40 years working for the fire and emergency services at the federal, state, and local level. The federal government can be considered a drug dealer. Wow, that's pretty bad. I've belonged to it for 30 years, but I've watched them. I know how they operate. Their drug is called money, funding. They either give it to you or they keep it. They feed it to you. You get hooked on it. Common Core is not about federalization. It's about globalization. Look up the United Nations and what they're doing. Look up the Muslim Brotherhood. You see them over in Egypt, they're playing candy weights. You've got the Muslim Brotherhood right here in the United States that is working with Common Core. Okay, so who, what's the Qatar Foundation? Look it up. Who is Ramadan? Ramadan is the grandson of the guy that started the Muslim Brotherhood in 48. Who's Bill Ayers? Who's very Gorian? He's the head of the Qatar Foundation. Who's funding it? What is the agreement between the Gates Foundation and the UN? What's the UN got to do with this? Look it up. Start doing your homework. You got Google. My gosh, I'm 71. I can figure it out. You educators out there, she's saying, wait a minute. What's he talking about the Constitution? Look it up, folks. Get back to the Constitution. My name is Dick Hilliard. I represent a one-man organization called a Concerned North Carolina Citizen. I didn't pay myself anything to come here. As a matter of fact, I paid to park and, and all this other stuff. <laughs> I will tell you just some comments from what I've heard. Standard stripe curriculum. If you're going to be tested on pull-ups and how fast you can run, guess what you're going to practice? Pull-ups and how fast you can run. I, um, I have lived through, I, this is my eighth decade of life. I'm not 80, but I have lived in eight decades. In my education, which was in the 50s and the 60s, that education in a high school and a land-grant college was able to send men into space and bring them back. Common Core sends young math students out into space and leaves them there. <laughs> I just don't think that's what we meant to do. Um, in 2009, 
$4.35 billion was allocated to the president to be able to develop a race to the top. Soon after receiving that money, he began to use it for bribes to bribe states who were deprived in money and maybe didn't have a plan to accept Common Core and change the concept to race to the middle. We're not striving for the best. Massachusetts, the race to the top was supposed to emulate the best school system. Massachusetts was number one for over 13 years and they have a lot of other accolades and actually one year the mathematics outperformed Japan. We should have been emulating them, we did not. Common Core was not designed by educators. In many respects, it reflects uh, the ACA, which we commonly call Obamacare. I'm shortening this up real quickly. And I want each of you to know that study your own constitution. The state of North Carolina did not ratify our constitution until the Bill of Rights was added. Don't be like one of the six national senators who wish they'd never voted for ACA. This is Obama core, not care. Take care. I better be good. Uh, my name is Tony Bruno. I'm from Cary, a uh, grandfather of four. Uh, members of the committee, uh, I will leave it to the parents and teachers and professionals in education to address the content and instruction as reasons to reject Common Core. Rather, I will offer some serious concerns the study committee may not be aware of with the development, promotion, control to advance what I call a national education standard. It should deeply concern everyone, especially the North Carolina representatives who did not vote on adoption, how Common Core came to life. Despite being told, excuse me, if, despite being told states participate, Common Core was created elsewhere by an unaccountable consortium without consultation with state legislators. Common Core was adopted very quickly by 45 states, while most legislatures were conveniently out of session, using the power of the purse the loss of federal funds for race to the top to coerce state governors and, state, and the State Department of Education. Even the validation committee created to evaluate the standard became a one stamp, not an honest assessment body to critically evaluate the Common Core. Of the 29 members most unknown to the public, five dissented and would not sign away. Yet their objections were not included in the final report. Despite the claims Common Core will be inclusive, allowing states to have autonomy, states must adhere to a standard under the control of the consortium, which owns the copyright. Lastly, the overall cost to the states was never presented to legislatures as the initial cost was provided through federal funds. The remainder must be paid by each state with an estimate of $600 billion. One final comment. I tried to learn as much as I can about Common Core in the past year. I contact the Wake School, School Board and the Superintendent, June Atkinson. Rather than be forthcoming, I was told criticism of Common Core was propaganda and I should not believe the myth. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, that has been, uh, I, well, I can't thank our staff enough for putting together something where in such a short period of time we could hear from so many people. I really want to thank the public as well. I know with all the passion and knowledge you have on this, limiting that to two minutes was a, a display of discipline. And I really commend you and thank you for being able to hand yourself in such a professional way. And that's the way we can get to the best solutions in a difficult situation. I will say, finally, two things, and thank you for the committee as well for the work you've done and being here. And, but our work's not over yet because we have decided that draft legislation is going to be important to address issues that we've heard. And the committee will be getting that by the 17th of April as required by the policy. And we will be having the next meeting April 24th to discuss and vote on that. Thank you very much for your time and have a good day.